Hey everyone, welcome to today's live stream. We're gonna be doing some really fun stuff. I've got uh, Knut here with us, uh, and for those of us, for those of you who are used to our community, I'm sure that you actually probably know Knut better than you know me. Uh, but if you're new and maybe tuning in from uh, from Twitch, uh, maybe Knut, you can give us a little a little overview of who you are and what you do here at uh, at Sanity. Sure. Uh, hello, I'm Knut. I'm I'm, I'm, I run. I run uh, head of the. I uh, run head of the lab. This is a good start, right? You're doing great. I I, I run developer relations at Sanity. So yeah, uh, I've been doing that for two years, and uh, now I got to work with you, Brian. Yeah, that's super awesome. It's been a lot of fun so far. It has. So uh, so what are we going to do today? Because uh, this is actually a kind of an idea that we poked around with a few weeks ago when you were technically supposed to be on vacation, uh, but you kind of built this proof of concept uh, there. And like, what, what, are we, what are we doing? Yeah, I guess sometimes you get that itch that you just have to scratch. Uh, I get that with code sometimes. Uh, we, we talked about uh, since sanity has all these APIs also for writing and updating and so on. Kind of be interesting to try out a sort of a blog comments form thingy with the Next.js. Uh, now I'll just assume that everyone knows what Next.js is. What is Next.js? Chat, chat, what's Next.js? Is, is it better than the previous JS? <laughs> That's, that's the question. That is probably the ultimate in like dad style jokes. That's that's great. That's good stuff. I will apologize beforehand uh, for all the dad jokes. <laughs> I'm not a dad either, so I have no excuse. Uh, so so yeah, like Next.js is obvious is is, is a uh, React meta framework. I think that's actually the term that Google likes to use around like Next, Nux, Gatsby. I don't know. There's an article on it. It's a weird word, but I kind of like it because it's not a static site generator. Or is it? It's it kind of is, or if if you want it to be. Uh, yeah. But uh, but yeah, it's uh, it's uh, a meta framework. Basically, Vercel, uh, previously known as Site, they have done a lot of the hard parts of of sort of doing a, a website with React. Uh, so next, JS just takes care of a whole lot and lets you query data fairly easily compared to other kind of approaches, I guess. And uh, it, lately they have been crushing it, as they say, uh, and added like API routes. So it's sort of easy to add sort of serverless functions and all of this. So yeah, uh, I really look forward to diving into this. We have a lot to do actually. Yeah, oh yeah, okay. Well, we can uh, yeah. we can maybe get started on it. Uh, let me go ahead and switch this over to our uh, presentation mode and your video uh, is still doing its fun uh, moving around. So let yeah. me also get that pulled up to let's, fix. Let's blame Microsoft. Oh yeah. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm powered by Skype, by Microsoft. And Skype does this weird thing by like cropping my video, weirdly. It, it uh, thinks it's a good idea because it's like giving us uh, lots of like the best... Uh, Best quality video of the bandwidth, I suppose, but it definitely makes this a little bit harder. Uh, but it looks like we are good now. And I've got this pulled up. Can you, I, I don't know, you can't actually see my screen. I should probably share that with you. But I can see it. I can actually, okay. because I'm watching the Twitch. Nice. So it's just delayed. Nice. So uh, <laughs> I'm actually, wor we're going to be working on this uh, this GitHub repo. This is the starter we're going to be working on today, although it's not a starter per se in terms of like you can't go and use it at uh, the slash create, sanity.io slash create. But uh, is our starting point. The link can be found in chat right now. So go ahead and click that. If you want to follow along or if you want to do this later, uh, feel free to, uh, to do that. Um, but I'm going to go ahead and move us over to our, uh, our VS Code window. And I've cheated a little bit. I've gone ahead and done the NPM install for both of these because I figure no one in chat wants to actually watch us sit around and wait for NPM to install. That's the best part. It's it's the part where I go over, I, I sip my tea. Yeah. yeah. This will also give give uh, give uh, your window a little bit of a chance to uh, to catch up. But let me actually do this for you as well. I think actually you should share I, I, screen. It's, Come to think it's coming your way right now. Um, <laughs> yeah. 
so yeah, that should be there for you. Um, so yeah, so we've got, it uh, looks like two, uh, two directories in here. looks like one is called Studio, which I'm assuming is where we're hosting our Sanity Studio. Uh, and then the other is called Blog Front End. Anything we need to look at in here before we move elsewhere? Uh, just a bit of context, maybe. Mm -hmm. So this blog front end thing is the sanity starter for from Vercel. Oh. So they kind of made this starter to to showcase the preview functionality, and it has this sort of nice tailwind styling and so on. So that gives us a head start. Perfect. Um, and we are go we are going to add a form. And if we have time, also the actual comments Ooh. that comes out, out from Sanity as well. Nice. But, uh, but yeah, and I, I think we will dive into this uh, after we have set up the schemas. Okay. So we can we can save it for, for later. Perfect. And now I also cheated a little bit and I went to, uh, to start this up. And I don't have a project ID, so I probably need to go grab a Sanity project ID and create a new project, right? Yeah. Uh, now we can show a bit of like uh, a pro tip, I guess. Ooh, okay. Uh, so you, you can actually go back to VS Code and uh, mm. and CD into the terminal of the of the Studio folder. Sure thing. Uh, and if you have the Sanity CLI installed, I do. Uh, you can now actually uh, run the command Sanity init. Sanity init. Hope this works. Uh, Haven't you installed the update? I know. I, I, Outrageous. I, I, yeah. I, I'm pretty sure my NPM is also out of date. Uh, let's see. Current folder contains a configured Sanity Studio. Would you like to reconfigure it? Yes. Yes. All right. And I assume we're going to create a new project and not one of my random uh, 11 day projects or Nux projects that I'm working on. Let's try. Call this uh, next blog comments. All right. Uh, it'll be stored in a data set. De default data set configuration? Yeah, let's, let's, let's do production. Let's do it live. I, I love doing it live. That's, that's my entire life. <laughs> All right, so we're creating those up. Hey, look at that. We already have a whole bunch of stuff ready to go for us. So theoretically, I can run Sanity Start and I get Studio going here. Do I need to do anything in the next area? Uh, no. Okay, fair <laughs> enough. Uh, or yeah, yeah, yeah. You're thinking about the project ID, perhaps. That was kind of um, where I was where I was thinking. Yeah, uh, let's do that afterwards. Okay. Let's just dive into the studio, studio, create the the schemas for for the comments. Perfect. Like the comments type. Yeah. All right. Well, the studio is compiling right now, so why don't we go ahead and dive into schemas? And just so you know, chat, if you have any questions along the way, I am monitoring that as I type whatever Knut tells me to type. Uh, so uh, be sure to ask questions along the way, and we'll try to answer them as best we can. Yeah, and and uh, perhaps a kind of a disclaimer: uh, we now probably assume that you already know a bit about how Sanity works, but. Uh, uh, do ask if if something is unclear. Um, we have a bunch of videos on on how to get up and running with schemas and so on. Yep. If you want to watch that, so yeah. There's also a guides area on our site, which there's a link in chat now for too. That has some some interesting information about a lot of that as well. Right. So so we already have the blog schemas here. So we have the post and an offer and. Uh, categories and the block content, which is kind of the rich text. Uh, and now we want comments. And my thought is that we kind of, we kind of want to save comments as a JSON document uh, within within Sanity that we can query and all, all of that good stuff. Sure. So let's make a new file, maybe. All right. Comments.js, maybe. Uh, let's do it singular. So it's, it's a bit of a convention. You can do this however you want, but uh, uh, we usually go with singular uh, naming. Uh, Sounds yeah, good for me. For the type. That, that makes sense because it's just one item and then there's a list of those items. So Exactly. We have actually a document a documentation article called Naming Things <laughs> where you can read about this uh, sort of how, how you should approach naming. Uh, yeah, uh, we define schemas with with JavaScript objects. Yep. So let's go ahead and make, export a default object, I guess. 
and that's a. Uh, you can use the. I almost always copy and syntax. paste. Yeah. What? What's, yeah. G- give me the syntax, Knut. I'm a copy and paster. Sorry. Export. Oh, export uh, space. Uh, default. Brackets. Gotcha. So first we need to to give it a name. Sure. Cons, I guess we're already uh, in an object. So yeah, what's the what's the name of our schema yeah. here? Uh, so use the key name, and uh, we can name it comment, I guess. So the string comment, right? Uh, I would use small caps here. Ah. Just makes it. Oh easier yeah, yeah, yeah. To use in code, um, and the type. This is the document type. Then you want to give it a title for the UI in the studio. So that would be comment, I guess. <laughs> With a capital C this time. And yeah, excellent. And now we can give it some fields, some kind of data fields. So then we use fields, and that's an array of objects that describe fields. And the, the first, well, yeah, let's talk about what, what kind of fields do we need for comments? Yeah, so I mean, I, I would say that there's probably some sort of name, like a person leaving a comment. We don't like the less anonymized we can make the comments. I feel like the better the comments <laughs> might be. Um, we, I mean, we didn't even cover the fact that like, do you even want comments on your site? But uh, of course, you want. Comments. You want as much interaction. You want the yeah, discourse. Yeah, interaction. You, and we all know yeah. that internet Engage. discourse is like the highest level of of discourse you can have. So uh, yeah, it's, it's pretty decent in the in the chat room uh, so far. So I, I trust people. Yeah, yeah, totally. Uh, so uh, yeah, I think a, a name would be nice. Obviously, some sort of text area type field, whether that's just a non-rich text or rich text, something to allow the user to put their comment in there. And that's like the the minimum yeah. viable product. But is there anything else we might want to add in there? It's tempting to do email, right? Yeah. But uh, we can skip that for this time. Sure. So we don't have to deal with the GDPR yeah. and all of the privacy stuff. Yeah. No, <laughs> I, I really don't want to have to deal with, with all yeah. that. Yeah. Let's do name first. Then. All right. So we're going to have a, a, an object here, and it's going to follow similar format as our, uh, as our export here, right? Yeah. So name, name. <laughs> it's an awkward sort of double. Uh, thing and uh, this is a type and that's probably a string so just a plain you mean you don't want to let thing. somebody put like rich text inside of their name i'm, I'm no. yeah no bad idea i'm full of bad ideas you probably should for accessibility i don't know but uh, a pro tip or a lazy tip yeah. you can actually just send as a studio will actually pick up on a name and capitalize it as a title so nice. you don't actually have to to write out the title if it's the same as the oh, name. That's super handy. That makes sense. Yeah. That's, that's, that's a lazy tip. magic. <laughs> uh, so no name. It's magic. It's engineering. <laughs> <laughs> any any uh, sufficiently advanced engineering appears to be magic. Anyway, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's great. Uh, so that, that's cool. And then we can go ahead and make another one, yep. which is, I guess, the actual comment. Um, and this is interesting because now we have a document type called comment mm. and then we have a field called comment, comment body in code. You sometimes you then would need to access the comment on the comment. Mm-hmm. So that's a lot of comments going on. So it can probably also just be text. Mm, text. So the text of the comments, if, if you get my Sure. Name. I always have an issue when I'm naming things kind of in, um, in stream, well, well, in like stream of consciousness, like going down, like I would actually name this, you know, comment text and then realize later when I'm accessing it in my templates that like comment dot comment text doesn't really make a whole lot of sense. Um, so yeah, I, I'm with you in other words. Right. And, uh, let's not make this harder than it is. Sure. Uh, and we can give this the type, uh, actually text. And the only difference uh, from string mm-hmm. is that this just gives you a sort of the other sort of the text area input component in in the studio. Yeah. 
with like multiple lines and so which on. theoretically we're not going to be doing a whole lot of editing of any of this in studio it's just to sort of uh have a have a place to 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 look at the comments yeah. i guess yeah, yeah. uh and if if you want to sort of be really strict about this mm -hmm. uh, and deny yourself the uh, the possibility of editing mm -hmm. stuff, uh, you can give this a read only true attribute as well. Something like this, right? Um, yeah. Which I um, and, and that would be uh, something that, that I would do like thing. with a lot of editors. I'd make sure that like if I had a company policy around this, I would codify that and make sure it happened. Yeah, but sometimes you might want to be able to actually comment, uh, no, edit the comment. True, true. <laughs> Although so, the other thing we could also uh, add, and yeah. this was probably more complex than we'll cover today, but like moderation, like we could have a field in here, there'd be a Boolean field. There'd be like allowed or unallowed. Yeah. Um, you, you already kind of have that. You can just unpublish the comment if you want to hide it from, from public, true. right? But uh, you can also, as you say, sort of add more fields that you can do things with as you want. Yeah. Uh, but there's there's one more thing we need. Okay. What am I missing? We need to know which which blog post are um, we commenting. True. Yeah. Otherwise, right. it's just going to be a stream of comments that go nowhere. Yeah. Mm. So this would be fine for a kind of a guest book situation, I guess. But. Uh, but we need, we kind of need a reference to the post that this comments belongs to. Sure. How are we going to do that, Knut? We'll make a reference field. All right. And uh, the name here can be post. So mm -hmm. comment post. Makes sense, yeah. I think. Yeah. And the type is then reference. And it needs to be a reference to something. Mm -hmm. So two, and it can actually be a reference to many things. So that's why we give this an array. So if you had a sort of an e-commerce, you can also add comments to products, for example. Mm -hmm. But uh, but uh, here we will do a object, and in that object we will write type and post because that's the type we want to comment. I'm sure on. if we came over here and took a look at uh, our our post name, it matches up with that type. Yes. Yeah, exactly. Anything else we need on our reference here? Just the type? Uh, no, that's it. I think. Sounds good. Now can we just, we can save this. Uh, there's one more thing we have to do before we can actually go on uh, and proceed. Okay. What do we need to do? We need to actually make sure that the studio is picking this schema type, mm. this new schema type app. Yep. So we have to import it into this schema.js file. True. So I imagine we've got this kind of configuration file. We've got our schema types and creator, but then we also have this area that we're importing all the stuff that you, you mentioned earlier, and we now need to import what we just created in here too, right? Yeah. And we're calling this comment from comment. And then we also, it looks like we're not using that anywhere, so we need to use it somewhere. And that's going to be down here in our schema types in this array down here. So we've got comment being used at the end. Thank you for all those helpful tips there, uh, <laughs> uh, VS Code, which it looks like, I don't know, I like to keep things tidy. I like things to kind of be where I expect them to be. So everything else is up here with block, comment, block content down below. I'm neurotic, it mm -hmm. turns out. So... Right, uh, and now we should be able to see this new document type uh, in the studio. All right, let's take a look after I log in. Let's see. Oh, yeah, I got a lot of logins. I, yeah, I don't want to talk about it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, are you logged in with the yeah, right? Yeah, I was not. Correct. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Interesting. I think we... Um, Maybe we were too fast, like you didn't unset the cookie or something. It's also possible that, yeah, it thinks it, I didn't actually log out of that wrong yeah. Google account. That's on me. I just, I hit back, like when, when, when in doubt, hit back, right? That's totally the way to do it. Yeah. Right. Here we are. Yeah. A comment. Uh, and now we can sort of add comments in here if you 
wanted we to. We can't because uh, we're not allowing uh, editors yeah. to edit this. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> what we probably should do is to to do the exciting part that we maybe should have done beforehand, namely add some sort of mock data to actually have something to query in the front end. Sure. That makes sense. So why do you go, don't go you can can you go ahead and just write a blog post? <laughs> nice. Okay. Oh yeah, there aren't any blog posts. You're a DevRel. You should be able to just write a blog post, right? Blog post about awesomeness. We'll generate an awesome slug. I don't even think we have any authors. That's not required field. Don't need any no. of this. Don't need categories. Totally had things bootstrapped. And I'm not sure how sort of if if the front end code, if they have a lot, a lot of like safeguards against missing data and so sure. on, so stuff might break if you don't have data for it. But uh, I guess we will discover that. We'll 100% <laughs> discover it and we can, Soon enough. we can fix it if yeah. we need to, right? No problem. Yeah. All right, we have a blog post now uh, about awesomeness. Um, so yeah, I think, I think we're good to go. This is obviously why, uh, why you make sure that I work at Sanity, right? That I can write a blog post this awesome on that amount of time. Yeah, this is very, this is very, this is as expected actually. Perfect. <laughs> Perfect. Just a proof of concept. It's fine. Um, yeah. cool. So now we have a post for the front end. We've got comments set up as a schema. We don't have authors or categories, but hopefully, hopefully we don't need that. Uh, what else do we need? I think that's it, actually. Awesome. Now we are ready to dive into the front end part of this project. Perfect. So let's go ahead and open up a new terminal window. Keep, we'll keep Studio running in the background. Uh, CD back up into our main, and then we'll go into blog front end. And then are we ready to go ahead and run this, or do we need to do other things before we can run it? Good question. I think we can, let's run it first to see if it actually also works. Uh, Again, I'm cheating. I know there's a run, there's a dev command in our uh, package.json, so I'm just going to run that. Otherwise, I would have gone and actually researched and figured that out. It just runs the next command, as it turns out, but that's not here. Really. Hey, we have a, uh, a website, theoretically. Theoretically. The server has started. I don't know if it's actually yeah. built yet. So. Yeah, and, and we don't know if it actually has the correct project ID and stuff. Uh, there we go. Yep. Here's our error. We have an error. Yeah. Errors are better than no errors, right? Uh, yep. Must contain a project yeah. ID. So let's figure that out. Yeah. Um, I expect that to be inside of the lib folder. Yep. May, or may, they, it has a dot env local example. Oh, true. Yeah, yeah. Uh, maybe they have. Yeah. Yeah. There it is. There you go. Because, yeah, it's, a, it's, a, it's an environment uh, variable there. Yeah. So, yeah. So, yeah, it seems like we should actually try to add these. Um, Makes sense. So, Daryl at Sanity, Brian, yeah. where could we, what is, what's the easiest way to find the project ID? Well, here, here's, here's the thing. There, there are a few ways that I would go about doing this. Uh, I'm, a, I'm a graphical user interface kind of guy, but uh, I theoretically know that don't we have to connect to, to it inside of our studio and maybe the CLI made that for us? Yeah, so what the CLI did uh, on that reconfiguration thing was actually to write to a file called sanity.json and, and replace whatever was there with the new project ID. So yeah, here we got yep. it. So you could do that. I, I, you could go to manage.sanity.io and, and pick it up from there. That's where all of your projects are going to live in your account. I, I imagine I could do this in the CLI. I actually haven't tried that, but I imagine I could. Yeah, I think if you run Sanity Debug, you will get all sorts of like useful uh, information about the project and code base and so on, sure. and including the project uh, ID and, and, and so on. So yeah, absolutely. So we'll head back to our env.local.example, uh, which I'll probably have to change away from example, and it's probably just env.local. Yeah. And then is an anonymous uh, token okay on just fetching our data or am I going to have to set up an API key for this? We are actually sort of at the end of this going to write data to Sanity. So we know that we need a writable token uh, and it's tempting to just like add that once we're here. Sure. Um, so 
then we need, would need to go into the manage.santia.io um, place. So you, you, if you are in the CLI, you can write sanity space manage to sort of go right into the project settings. But uh, yeah, uh, you can also find it here somewhere, mm -hmm. probably on the sort of last entry. Maybe? Next blog comments. Yeah. Oh, there's a mosquito flying settings. around my face. That's good. Uh, yeah, so <laughs> we have our settings. API. Tokens. All right. I trust no hooligans, even in a... Uh, oh, yeah, you took it off screen. Yeah, we're taking both of these off screen for just a, just a fraction of a second. You can see my awful my awful uh, desktop there for a yeah. second. You take uh, cybersecurity really, really, really seriously. Uh, and I'll show this real fast. So when you, when you pull that up, it does ask you what kind of rights you want to give the token, whether it's read, write, or deploying studio. In this case, I assume that we're just doing write on this. Yeah. I'm going to so, uh, call this comment engine i don't know naming's hard all right and it's showing me a big green screen and i've got an environment token or an environment uh an api token there i'm gonna paste that into our m.local do we need a preview secret do you think or are we good without that right now no it can be the same actually okay. oh, no the preview secret is actually just a random thing okay um well, not, uh, we are not going to, to showcase a preview feature here, so it doesn't matter. Perfect. So I have saved that and closed it so that no one's going to go make requests against my and studio. That token is, 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 it is not short. It's, it's a bit long, actually. So I'm almost like, tempted to show <laughs> it, to, to challenge the, the watchers to, to go and, and do something mischievous with that. But uh, yeah, let's do it your in, way. In Twitch land, you can clip it, you can highlight it, and it lives on and on and on. So then I have to go delete it, and that's just a whole... Oh, yeah. yeah. I got other stuff to do with my day than, than manage, uh, manage Twitch chat posting to my, uh, to my Sanity account. So we now have that API installed. I, do we need to potentially rebuild or recompile? I don't know, actually. I would guess so uh, since env uh, environment variables tends to sort of be initiated when you start makes sense to me um next might be so clever that it just knows but uh yeah let's restart yeah. Or... it never hurts like it's it's only like a 30 second thing no big deal in fact it was even faster this time around oh we still have an error they, they've been doing so great with uh optimizing stuff all right so there's an issue yeah, name. hero post. So this is the thing I was talking about. Okay. I anticipated that it hasn't guards against missing data. Gotcha. So we could either go remove those guards, or is that in our main image? I suspect that it might look for an author ah. to uh, to fill in sort of the the name of the blog and so on. Sure thing. Hoping I don't need that. Testing bio. All right, we'll publish that data. And we'll just save a file and see if it recompiles. Oh, that saved my schema, not actually in my... Compiled successfully that time around. So yeah, looks like it was probably the author that was causing us grief there. Refresh our local host. Author dot, dot name undefined. Hmm. Try to reload. Um, maybe. All right, let's pull up this error so we can actually take a look at it and debug. Yeah. It isn't a live coding stream without some some troubleshooting. Exactly, right? and troubleshooting is just such a, such a handy thing for other people to see anyway. I'm a big believer that it's super helpful. So it still doesn't like name. If we go into hero post then in uh, components, in the component, yeah, this is better. So yeah, so this is pretty clean, and uh, it hasn't sort of. If offer is uh, undefined, mm -hmm. it can't access the the underlying sort of variable. 
So we have two options here, I guess. We could try the fancy new JavaScript syntax, mm. uh, knowledge coalition, or optional tenor. I don't remember <laughs> the names, actually. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but the question mark dot thing. <laughs> yeah, which I have not used, but I have seen that it's going to be awesome when it's fully in, in browsers all over the place. I believe Next just supports that, what? I believe. And I, I want to find out All right. if it actually does. I think it has some Babel Webpack stuff that goes on. Optional chaining. So Ryan in chat. Yeah, he's he's excited. Yeah. All right. Thanks. <laughs> uh, let's 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 scroll down and see if we can optional chain this thing. So author name and probably author picture. Yeah. Even though it didn't complain, but uh, but yeah. So what's the syntax on this? Because I I need to be schooled on new so, stuff. So you have to put a question mark in front of the dot. There? Uh, on the other side. Oh, in front of, you said. Yeah. Well, VS Code doesn't seem to have an issue with that. This is the future. Let's get rid of that. Compile it successfully. Let's see if we get any errors. It looked like we got errors a few minutes after last time, but... Hey, automatically it, reloaded here. Yeah, there we go. There go. It's great. Wow. Look at this beautiful cover image we put in, y'all. This is the best cover image. <laughs> uh, yeah, that's super handy. Like that, instead of having to write, write like a big ternary around that inside of like either in my in my like middleware yeah, or yeah. And especially if you work with GraphQL, mm. where you kind of always have to sort of map out the, the the nesting and so on. That this is super useful. Yeah. So we now have our blog post about awesomeness, and let's see if it has. Can we even click it? Looks like it. Here we go. And then looks like and the same thing. Yeah, exactly. Right? Don't want terminal open anymore. It's, I wonder if why it doesn't pick up because now we oh did you link the the post blog post to an author in the studio? I did not that, that was actually I, I almost went behind the scenes and started doing that while you were talking about optional chaining, but you were so excited about optional yeah. chaining that I wanted to let you do it. Yeah. Um, but yeah, like nice. the, the, po the post does not technically have an author. So, so we can either do this, this ternary or this uh, optional chain again, which would make sense from like a maintainability perspective that like, yeah, let's do it. <laughs> uh, let's deal with messy data. So let's see where this right? is. This is in, looks like it's in post header.js. And we'll do that same thing yeah. with the optional chaining. And it's already reloading for us when we come back. You have more, what? you have more fields that you need to do. Oh yeah, look, there's all these down here. Yeah. Now I really wish we'd gone the lazy way and gone into our data and changed our data. Uh, looks like just those two. Find author.name. Post preview, I don't think we necessarily care about. And post JS, I think we're fine. So, there we go. Perfect. There we Blog go. post about awesomeness. Right. Cool. Cool, cool, cool. Yep. It's really in sort of nice and clean blog theme they have going on there. Yeah. Using Tailwind. I mean, I think it'd be it'd be you know much better with a with a, an image up there. Like my designer heart is really struggling, like to have like all this stuff without like the intended data, but. Yeah, but actually, this 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 is kind of useful uh, if if we actually were to design a blog to have the sort of when we not we don't have sort of data, how should the components actually render? Mm -hmm. uh, should we have sort of a bit of border uh, there, or should we just like remove the whole component if if there's nothing to to show, right? True. Or make a ghost component, or although what is the full DAX? Theoretically, right? We actually have this um, this data that they've set up as a default somewhere that I have to go dig in and find where they set that that default value. But they have at least an alt text to be like, "This is what this is," uh, so at least you know what you're missing. Exactly. Now we are now we're moving into the fun part. Yeah. Uh, because a comment engine like. You need somewhere in the front end to type in the data, the comments, True. the the critique or the praise, if you want, of this blog. All post. my blog so, posts only get praise, so no critiques, <laughs> not not available. Um, if this was like just HTML, it would be fairly straightforward. But we are in React now, yeah. and that's a different creature. 
Um, and full disclosure, this is also where I'm kind of not like, how does that work again? <laughs> but uh, I, I've done some previous research. I know that we can use a library. Oh, okay. And, and cheat. I love cheating. And, and I want to be kind of tidy. So I want to make a separate component for the form. Sure. I like that. Um, so let's make a file. Oh, okay. I was, I was getting ready to like NPM install something. Where are we going to make the file in components? Yeah. All right. And we can call it, I guess we can call it form.js. I was going to call it comment form.js, but form.js works for me. All right. It is what it is. It is. And uh, uh, yeah, should we, yeah, we can go and, and fetch the dependencies, I guess. And I guess there's a bunch of excellent React form libraries that we could uh, use. Sure. Uh, I want to go with React form hook. <laughs> All right. Uh, and maybe you should just actually go and Google it and sort of get the the GitHub and the documentation and all of that. React form hook? get a sense of Yeah. It's a thing, at yeah. least. Um, and this gives us uh, a fairly easy way to add a form uh, with sort of the the handling that React wants and the callbacks or methods or what have you. Yeah. So, so yeah. All right, let's go ahead and get that installing and let's see what else we need to do according to the documentation for getting it up. So I think the, the quick start, we can probably just copy paste this and and change it to what we want. I love a copy paste. All right, so we have that's yeah. installed now, so we shouldn't need terminal anymore. All right. Use form from React hook form. Sounds good. Yeah. Fun thing about Next uh, is that Next just assumes that this is a React file. So you don't actually have to import React for this oh, work. That's uh, handy. That's optional. Yeah. That's engineering. Let's, let's, just, let's just delete it then. If we don't need it, let's not have it. Yeah. And then this, this, is like, this makes a function called app uh that's not accurate in the context that we True. are in so i guess we can call it form all right done um and uh, i we kind of know that this component should be aware of this it's sort of context what what post it is mm -hmm. in so um we probably need to pass in a property or prop called ID or post ID or something. So in this function, um, we need a uh, param. All right. ID, data ID. Um, let's, let's just call it underscore ID because that's sort of the the key inside of, of Sanity. And uh, since this is React, um, you, get the, you get this props thing mm -hmm. from the parent component. So we, we, ha we want to access the prop inside of that object. I'm doing a great job of explaining <laughs> this, right? Uh, my point is that either you, we take in props mm -hmm. and then we sort of derive ID from the sure. props object, or we can go and directly assess the ID by putting brackets around it. This is, uh, what's the actually, the, it has been a while since I've done this now, I realize, like talking about code because I've, I've been doing sort of planning. All, all the strategy, right? Are going to talk about <laughs> code. But uh, yeah, uh, this is, yeah. yeah, yeah de it's, de destructuring, it's de deconstruction. It, it, it is a form of destruction. Is it per per param destructuring? Like, what is it? it is destructuring, yeah. but uh, when you do it sort of in the a, in the function, mm. let's not let's not. We we need to move I, on. We have a lot of things. I, I, to I like I like discussing yeah you know, the the pedantry of like you know the names, but yeah yeah we we just need the ID. We're gonna put I it in brackets. Like, uh, we'll we'll go for it. Uh, send an email <laughs> to, to Brian. Um, uh, <laughs> right. Um, Everyone agrees on this. Yeah, yeah. But there's different types of destruction because if you see on line five here, 
you have another form of destructuring, yep. right? Uh, this is a totally a quiz, and we don't have prices this time, but we should have uh, <laughs> next time, yep. maybe. But, okay, let's see. Uh, we have a register, we have handle submit, we have errors, yep. and we have the use form hook. So this just sets up a, a bunch of nifty and handy mm -hmm. things from, from when you are creating a form. And we have a unsubmit kind of like function here. And this is allegedly where we can send some data to a place, uh, for example, sanity, yep. right? And uh, under here, we have the actual uh, front end code, like the the HTML that ends up in the yep. and the blog post. So a bunch of fields. Some of them we don't need. Some of them we have to change. And maybe we have to add one. Sure. Yeah. Because we don't have first and last name and we don't have age and all that good stuff. Yeah. And um, if you remember, the first field we made in the comment uh, document yep. type was name. name. So maybe we'll change the first name to name and actually let's make it the second one here because that one's already using required and we probably want this to be a required field. And I'm assuming that that's what we're going to yeah. be doing there. So input name equals name. Ref is we're going to register it and make it required. Makes sense to me. And then we need the, did we call it text? Uh, yes. So we probably want that to be a text area as well, right? Yeah good old text area and name equals text and then it's a non self-closing tag because HTML loves that sort of thing and then and uh, we probably would need to add the ref here as well so that react kind of knows that this is sure. a, a data yeah. field and picks that up so we'll register it and we also want this to be required as well I assume because doesn't have if someone just wants to tell us their name and we also Maybe need to okay. handle the error as name and not last name so yeah. keep that in mind. this is sort of nice sort of nice nice concise way to to deal with forms actually. yeah I, i'm not i'm not minding it too much errors dot text <laughs> and uh a, an actual comment is required we'll get a little tongue-in-cheek there <laughs> All right. And we have this input type submit. Mm -hmm. That's interesting. Mm -hmm. Well, it, it probably works. I would bet I would bet that it does. I mean we could also use a button instead, but submit's fine for this, right? We could also use the rest of the uh, the stream to discuss if it's a button or is it it is an input. What it it, it it is not. It's it's not a link. That's least. true. We can agree. We we, um, we do not have an yeah. anchor tag. We are we are okay. It is it is okay. If you if you want to have arguments about that, come on to my personal stream and we'll uh, we'll have arguments about it because I I like that. Not not so much for educational <laughs> today though. Right. Is this the stream for an argument? It's it's maybe maybe argument destructure as as uh, Rifil in chat mentioned uh, might be the name of our destructuring. Nice one. So, doesn't Twitch have points when we when when we make them, sort of like overlays or whatever? Hey, you you want that? I'll make that happen. <laughs> right. Uh, moving yep. on. Yeah. Right. Uh, this seems like a minimal viable form. Yeah. To me, uh, should we try it out? Sure. I I feel like it's not going anywhere though. Am, am I wrong in that? No, oh, okay. Let's see if it renders. Right, fair enough. Yeah, yeah. Right. <laughs> uh, yeah. So I guess it goes into the post. Yeah, we could... Well, there's there's post body and post header, so I'm assuming post body. Yeah. So we are in sort of the components uh, area mm -hmm. now. Uh, we can make it easier for ourselves and go into the pages, ah, maybe, okay. to sort of the post template. Um, Slug.js. So this is the the template for the individual post, and this is where kind of uh, next is dealing with fetching the data and sort of laying out the different components uh, and so on. So this is kind of more business logic sure. that happens. That makes here. sense. Uh, Looks like we've 
And I, I think it makes sense to import the form in, into this All right. uh, component. All right, so import. Uh, what was our actual, do we need to name it, I guess, uh, form? Yeah, I would, be, I would use sort of capital mm. yep. um, to just to mark this as a sort of a layout component. And yeah, and find find the Where form. Where is that? That is in components. Form.js, there we go. All right, so we have a form. Um, so now we can go ahead and put that in to a place, uh, probably below the post body, maybe. So inside the article, but after post body. And then we're, we need to pass in that, uh, that prop, right? What, what are you doing? I don't want, I want yeah. you to be self-closing. There we go. Uh, what do we call it? Underscore ID. Yeah. And that is, I guess, post underscore ID. Look good. Doesn't look good, <laughs> but it looks right. Fair enough. All right, so let's see if we have any errors. Attempt to import of, does not contain a deep, yeah, we didn't actually export any of the things we did inside of our form. Yeah, that's true. That's easy to forget. Yeah. And this is also, this is gonna, I've seen that Dan Abramov, like from the React team has, he, he had a, he sort of, a, he had a, had a sort of a, a pet peeve or like a, a, a thing about named exports. Uh, so, so in the schemas, we are using this export default mm -hmm. blah thing. Uh, that's actually kind of an anti pattern mm -hmm. because you can, on the other side, you can import it as whatever you that's want. Fair. Like you can choose your own name and that can be hard to debug. Um, so sometimes you won't don't, or most times probably you just want to put export function form. Uh, so we can actually do All that, right. uh, here. So instead of like under here, do the export default mm -hmm. thing, you can go up to line three and just type in export, oh, export this function. In front of function. Yeah, that makes sense. Yep. yep. Yeah. But then we go, then we need to import it slightly differently, right. uh, inside of the slug thing. Uh, if you look, so on line 13, we have this brackets CMS name thing. This is the same, same thing. So brackets form and this form, this has to be the same name as the function we defined, which, so we can't put whatever you want there is in fact form with perfect. Yeah. So this should be working compiling currently and blog post of awesomeness we have yeah a submit button or submit input <laughs> um, yeah I, I suspect we actually also have the elements but i also suspect that tailwind has some reset yeah. thing or whatever let's see here's our form uh, our form has an input yeah. name okay yeah because it's all it's all in line uh, we'd have to actually put a tailwind class on the form to do the things we want to do but they're here yeah. Do you know Tailwind? I know how to Google uh, forms. <laughs> I, there's a there's a class and there's some other classes. Like I, I syntax is my strong suit. Uh, yeah. In fairness, I do enjoy rolling my own CSS. So that's kind of where we're at right now. Form. Uh, that's a lot that we don't need. Let's just. Tailwind is kind of like on my things to to yeah. do. Let's just let's let's <laughs> leave it like this for now, and we'll uh, we'll we can always come back and, and make the styles. Let's let's get the data pushing somewhere uh, since that's what we're actually working on today. All right, we'll okay, make it look right. good later. Yeah, back yeah, on yeah. track. Yeah, we will. <laughs> <laughs> that's the way it works, right? When you refactor, you always come back. All right. Yeah. Uh, okay. This is the cool stuff. This is the cool part. Uh, now we have to get this form data to to a place. Uh, did I miss this? Did you actually try the form and submit it? Oh no, I didn't actually submit the form. Um, because there's a console log, uh, I think. So we should be able to see 
that there's an action or like yeah submit hey look yeah we got yeah. the console log with our stuff that's what we want nice but we are not getting yeah. our id is that gonna matter yeah, but we have that id in the component so right. we can just yeah fair, fair. Cheat a bit yeah uh, but you, you, correctly if this was like just html we maybe would want to to put in a hidden field or something yeah yeah, yeah. i like how there's a uh uh H rising in the, in the chat uh, tailwind with react is like CSS in HTML in JS. And I'm not complaining. <laughs> uh, tailwind is quite popular. And, yeah. uh, I can I kind of understand it. it. It's convenient. Yeah. And, uh, you kind of like bring your own design and it has all of these nice patterns that makes stuff consistent. So I totally understand the appeal. Although, um, it's a lot of classes. Yeah, and, and in fairness, That's like I, I do enjoy the idea of utility first CSS and I write my own utilities and like I use them and like so I, I'm I'm with like utility, but I like having other stuff. I don't know. Again, other places to have that CSS conversation. Um, but yeah. I, I do like CSS in HTML, in JS. It, it, that, that's what that is what it feels like in a lot of ways. Uh, anyway, we're gonna make the uh, the post submit to sanity, question mark. Yeah, so um, we kind of want a middle layer, I think, because we don't we don't want to expose the right token to the front end so that everyone has it and can do mischievous things with it. So we, we kind of want a proxy, as they say. Yeah. And what's cool with Next is it, it comes with this API roots out of the box. Um, so in this uh, blog front end folder, we have a a folder called API, I think. All right, let's see. Let's it's let's clean up our. Or yeah. do we have it? I think we have it. No, it's inside of Pages, actually. Ah, uh, yeah. There's there's yeah. all those pages plus our API routes all exist inside of there. Here we have two existing sort of functions or endpoints uh, that deals with the preview. So they kind of deal with getting preview data and adding that to the front end templates mm -hmm. uh we're we not going to care about that for this time yeah we are going to care about a sending data so let's make a new function yeah and what's this going to be doing now, uh it will i guess submit or create a comment or something yeah seems reasonable create comment although i'm going against their naming conventions where they're using dashes there but we'll yeah, yeah. Multiple devs working is fine. We're, we're kind of punk at Sanity. <laughs> yes, mention, right? Um, and this will export a function that takes some arguments. And this is where I'm totally like uh, copy pasting because this is probably going to be a something particular because of the engineering that goes into next and sure. what they assume they get and so on. So I would just look at preview and gotcha. see what ha what is happening there uh, ah yeah, yeah default async function which we probably want this to be async too since we're going to be hitting the send yeah. the api we take the request and the res and get the response back yeah so it's an here it kind of makes sense that it is a default export because this is just something that next deals with so it assumes that the export is uh, from a certain form sure um and it takes the request um so the stuff that we are sending to it and uh, it also has this response thing that we can use to, to decide how what it should return uh, so if if you have done stuff with express for example in node this should be kind of familiar mm -hmm. and yeah um now now I will actually look at <laughs> cheat sheet time. Cheat I like it. Yeah. Um, we know that we have to take in some data. So the kind of the object that we show the showed in the console, right? Mm -hmm. There will be an object with the name and the comment coming yep. in on that request, I assume. Yeah. And, uh, when we are sending a form, uh, that typically ends up in the request body. That's where we typically find the data. Sure. 
So then we can say const brackets. Uh, and then the names of the fields that we want, so name and text. Thank and you, Oscar. I have to look that up. ID. And underscore ID. All right. And this is uh, allegedly this is rec dot body. <laughs> I like I like that's allegedly that. Yeah. Yeah, because I had this. This is like a major stumbling block for me. I always forget that through the HTTP request you get json you mm -hmm. don't get sort of nice javascript <laughs> out of the box sure so you have to actually turn that json string into javascript object do you remember how to uh i can't i can't remember if it's a if it's a method on the array or on the on the string or if it's a method that you call and pass the string into is it dot json or is it json with a with an argument JSON is a first class citizen in JavaScript. So it's actually JSON dot parse. That's and then right. you pass in the rec body. There we go. I, that's, that is there, legitimately, I look that up every time because like, I just can never remember the syntax behind it. I tend to call myself uh, in between developer because I'm <laughs> always ending up like doing this thing. Yep. <laughs> like in the, in the mid middle part. But, uh, but yeah. And I, and I know that you you prefer console logging <laughs> to debug. I so do. Let's console log something, right? All right. Do we want to just console log all these and see what we get? Yeah. All right. Yeah. Name, text, ID. I I am I am a console log fiend. Unfortunately, I should, probably shouldn't be. Uh, there are yeah. way better ways to do it, but. Let's see, we don't need that open anymore. All right, so when we submit the form, we should now get in our Next.js um, console that. Yeah, because this is kind of this is kind of server side. So this is on the back end, if you want. So whatever happens in this function will never go into the browser. Gotcha. So but, we'll go uh, ahead and submit nothing this. Nothing will happen now because we haven't set up the request already. Fair. Yeah. Yeah. The actual like form action or whatever our form library wants for the action to be. And uh, yeah, so we need to go back to the form component uh, and add some code. All right. So here we have this on submit thing. Yep. Uh, this is what ha this is where you define what happens when you submit uh, some data. Yep. And. A cool thing with Next is that it comes with fetch out of the box. Nice. So it just deals with, if, if your browser doesn't sort of support fetch, uh, it will polyfill that and so on. So you don't need to add Axios or anything. You can just use fetch. That is super handy. Uh, yeah. So let's go ahead and fetch. <laughs> and that takes and a... Really good just the shortest way to the goal, right? Yeah. Um, and the endpoint will then be slash API slash create comment because it uses the file name to define the the sort of and URL. So API or API is plural. API. Okay. Singular. Yeah. Yep. And uh, we need a bit more stuff here. Mm -hmm. So we need to pass an object that defines kind of like what type of request this is. Uh, we are sending data. And in HTTP speak, that is called a post uh, request. So the method. Uh, so yeah, method is post. We are posting something. Um, and then we have uh, the body. So the actual data, mm -hmm. and this is also where I'm. I think we need to pass it a JSON string. Mm -hmm. Maybe, maybe it will just deal with it if we <laughs> pass it a JavaScript object. I don't think that but, it does. Uh, I think it errors. But right, I trust you. <laughs> and and here we can pass in the the data that we have. JSON stringify data. Anything else we need um, to pass into these options? Yeah, so we, we know that we need the ID. So now we can choose if we want to add that hidden field or if we want to just do it like instead of data, just build the object here. Hmm. Um, probably makes sense not to expose the ID in the front end, 
right? Uh, no, that that's okay. Oh, that's no, no problem. Yeah, fair. the ID is kind of public; it's known. Uh, so yeah. So so six one half dozen the other. Which way do you want to go, Knut? Let's let's just do the fancy way. And if you, if you bracket around data that we're passing into Stringify or that we're pulling in here. Yeah. Uh, that, that we are passing into Stringify. Okay. And then you can type in underscore ID. Do we want to destructure data? We want to spread it. Sp spread it. I'm yeah. sorry. Yes, spread it. Object spreading. Uh, so that the keys, the keys will be on the same level. And so don't get sort of data, name, text, but just, then we get name, text, ID. Yep. Like, Nicely put. Yeah. All right. So now we have a post method that hits API create comment that passes in the data, which is name and text, as well as the ID. Um, where are we getting that ID from? Is that? It's been a few minutes. Uh, we, we passed it in from uh, from the slug template that has all the sort of the business data and sets up all the different components that makes out the blog post. Okay. Yeah. Right so, here. I got you. Perfect. Uh, so now we're passing that into the create comments here. We should now get this console logged in our uh, console here. Brian, testing text area, and that sanity ID. Yeah. Perfect. Look at that. It worked. Yep. Uh, yeah, I was, I was actually almost surprised. <laughs> just like... <laughs> Is. Yeah, cool. Um, yeah, uh, let's get this data into Sanity then. Yeah, that's the part everyone is, has been waiting for, right? We've been we've baited uh, breath. I think is the is the the term. <laughs> right. Um, so then, then we need to have a way to sort of post this further into to the data store. Yeah. And we could have just used the fetch method uh, again, sure. uh, because it's, it is only HTTP, but why not use the SDK that we already have in this project that makes it a bit easier. Yeah. Um, if you looked at the, the preview endpoint uh, thingy, um, No, it was actually, wasn't actually here. Um, maybe it is. We we are after a client. Yes. That, that we are searching for a client, right? Because we know that uh, there's a client here. Um, here we go. Import import client. Yeah. So the dot sanity file. Uh, wherever it is in the lib folder, mm -hmm. we'll export a client. So we can we can probably use that because that's kind of set up, right? Yep. So we don't need preview client. We just want client and we want it to come from, we're going to have to go up a layer because we're in components and this will be in lib? No. I think so. It's not like, I think oh, for, uh, my from is not right. There we go. Client is not declared value. Okay. Um, so now we have the client and we want to use that client to submit and it has all of our keys already optimized inside of that, right? I don't actually think it has the token mm. because I suspect that this is the kind of the read client and then I have configured that preview client, which probably have a token, but we can, we can deal with that. Okay. Um, and, uh, yeah, so under this uh, line six, we can actually, if you type client, and then we can we can sort of reconfig it or add config to the existing client. So we can say config, mm -hmm. and you can pass this object with a token. So if you an, an object, object and. And then you need to pick up this token, and that's process env and the mm -hmm. env name that you picked. Uh, uh, all right, going off screen for a second. Going, What's that? Okay, sure. 
Uh, you could also just go into sanity, uh, the sanity file. Oh, the sanity file, yeah. Sanity.json. No, I mean the the in the blog front end ah. where they are defining the. There it is. Uh, it's if you scroll down. API token. Sanity API. There we go. All right. So, process so this is kind of code, but yeah, yeah, yeah. who cares? Exactly. Uh, and then you can add another sort of dot, uh, and we can sort of add the method. No, uh, I'm sorry. So the, after config, because uh, now we have yeah. configured it with a token that has writing permissions, and then we say create to create a new document. Mm -hmm. And create takes sort of the an object, which is a description of the document that we want to create. Uh, so we need to tell Sanity what type of document this is. And sort of the built-in um, keys has an underscore. So we need to say underscore type. Gotcha. And this is comment, correct? Yep. All right. And then we have the name and the text, I guess. And you can actually say just name colon, and it will use the variable and, uh, and I'm sorry, comma, <laughs> name comma. So this is the same thing as typing name colon name, right? Nice. It's a shorthand. Perfect. And then we have a reference field. And a reference field is a, uh, it's also an object. So that will be, I think we called post. That was the key, right? Uh, for oh, for uh, for the ID, yeah, yeah, it was post. Yeah, for didactic. Let's let's be a bit didactic mm -hmm. and go back to the studio. And uh, I don't think you made it read only, so we can actually do this. Uh, if we add a comment. Yep. Uh, and if you just pick a post inside of this reference field there we go um, hit that and go into the inspector and this is kind of nice if you are not sure about the data structure here you have kind of a data structure for how a post reference should look like right yep. so have you have the post takes an object there's a type inside of the object that's a reference and there's a key called ref. underscore ref yeah. and this is the post id that is it is referencing so we kind of like just need to copy that structure. Yeah, so it's type is reference. And it's ref is the ID. ID. Anything else we need in there? So this will probably work. <laughs> uh, it is sort of handling things nicely and correctly sure. because it just like runs this thing and does nothing. Yeah. So the front end doesn't get a response and and so on. But it will be enough to get data inside of yeah. Sanity at least. All right. So let's take a look. Let's uh, make sure everything's compiled. So especially since we're at an hour and ten minutes, uh, let's uh, let's see if we can get it here. Let's refresh the page as opposed to. It's kind of cool to have the studio and the front end up in the same window now. Yeah. <laughs> that's that's my my, my pet. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so new name, new text, open up console just in case, submit. All right, so we still console logged that Something. for whatever reason. Um, but if we maybe you would see a network new name. Uh, yeah, there, there it is. is. Have an oh yeah. Yeah, uh, we forgot to 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 change the key to post. Yeah. So that would be so in the serverless function that we have. Uh, yeah. Uh, okay. So instead of ref, it would be post. So post, uh, which of course now we have we're going to have this just hanging out forever unless we delete it. But let's go ahead and submit newer name. <laughs> Uh, newest text, submit that again, and automatically pulls in that it's on post. 
You can then click nice. over to the link if you want to see what that post was. We have a commenting engine, and it only took an hour and 10 minutes with banter at the beginning. <laughs> yeah. Uh, do we have time to actually also query the oh, yeah. comments? Uh, that's, that's, that's up to you, my friend, on, on whether or not you want to do that. Pe yeah, people are still hanging out watching it. us do this, so I assume they're at least yeah. somewhat engaged about it. So let's do it. I, I guess it's kind of well. Maybe it is kind of nice to just have sort of the comments coming in, and only you can see them, right? Sure. Uh, it, it, it's a it's an interesting dynamic, but most times you maybe want to actually also um, put the comments on on the blog post yeah. <laughs> for everyone to see. Probably, right? yeah. Um, so so then we have to query for these new documents um and like i i feel i should say there's a bunch of stuff we have just skipped now we we haven't dealt with sort of should the form actually render when it's submitting the data or should it sort of have this submitting a state and so on there's a bunch of like state yeah. stuff we haven't touched on here um and and maybe we should just go ahead just to not make everyone mad uh, and add a wait in front of the client config here. Um, right. So this, this we can use this async await syntax yep. to... Uh, we're doing that on... Yeah. Right. And, uh, and under it, return, return something nice for the browser. So uh, make a new line yep. and return res um dot status and do you remember all the http statuses this is i mean i i, I know a handful um uh, i mean do we want the the oh, teapot the teapot <laughs> yeah uh what is the teapot i, I honestly don't I know, know i think it's like something 13 but um 413 perhaps sorry i have to i have to know 418 <laughs> I'm a teapot. Yeah. Let's let's do four eighteen. So parenthesis four eighteen. Right. Um and leave it. <laughs> I don't know what the browser does with that actually, but the problem is that's a, uh, at the four hundred level, that's gonna give us maybe some issues, but we can see. We can see what happens. Uh, it's kind of like HTTP snark. Uh, yeah, yeah. And I feel I feel like I feel like it wouldn't be streaming on Twitch if there weren't some sort of snark. So let's make it HTTP snark. <laughs> Uh, right. Doesn't have any issues with that because we're not using that. But yeah, you can also go into the network tab and see oh, the true. request yeah. and how it terminated. Uh, Let's see. Uh, I think you have to look at X -HR. HR. Yeah. Oh, I, I see that. Yeah, from an, a previous project, I was yeah. just looking at uh, JavaScript. <laughs> Teapot status. Pending. Pending. Turn. I bet it's not going to enjoy that 418. Yeah. Doesn't matter. Um, we, we could have it given it a 200 and uh, assumed that it always worked or yeah. wrapped the thing in a try catch and returned 500. Whatever. Yep. Uh, yep. Um, I have kind of the a finished code in a GitHub in my personal rep uh, repository, so uh, we can post link for that after. Yeah. If people are curious, it's not. That's so the actual nice. good way of doing it. A, a, a slightly better way, maybe. Fair enough. <laughs> but, uh, but let's go ahead and query the existing right. comments. Um, so then we have to figure out where the slug template is doing the data fetching. Yep. Um, slug. Follow the trail, sort of. So next, next comes with these um, data fetching capabilities. Um, it's called get server props and get static props and, and so on, because you mm -hmm. can actually make static sites uh, from from next. Um, and they are usually exported sort of at the bottom of the file. So if if we scroll down, yeah. So we have this. Get static paths. So this is where it fetches all the the URL structure, all the slugs yeah. and so on. So maybe scroll a bit up. I expect to find the data fetching here. Yeah. So get static props, 
this is where it does the data fetching. Um, so it has this get posts and more posts. This has thing. to be one of my favorite function names ever. <laughs> I love it. It's, it is what it is, right? <laughs> uh, it's on the tin. So let's go uh, ahead and, and get to that, wherever that function is defined. All right, let's see if VS Code will get us there. Hey, it did, perfect. This yeah, is inside cool. API.js, just so everyone yeah. knows. So yeah, here they are doing some uh, some different Grok queries and fetching fetches. Um, they use this promise all thing. This mm -hmm. is fine. It makes two requests. They can actually wrap all of this into the same query. Uh, let's not go into that this time. Yeah. But uh, but let's see. So the first here is the query for the actual post that we are looking at. And this is where we can add the comments, I think. So to this Grok query, let's add another field and let's call it comments. Are we going to want? Or, yep. <clears throat> now I'm losing my voice. That's that's good. Uh, you get you get used to it. Uh, are are we renaming it? Do I need to put this in quotes, or are we good having it just be the uh, key like this? Uh, good one. It's actually in quotes. This is Scrock, so it has a slightly different sort of rule set. Um, and then we have to make a new query because we are getting the comments documents that relates to this, that has a reference to this post. Mm -hmm. uh, so this is kind of like a, a bit of advanced Grok. Um, yeah, so we know it's a type of comment that we want, and there's another criteria. Uh, and Grok has this references function. So we can query for posts that references something. <laughs> so uh, it's a hard name to say, references. References, says, yeah. Yes. yeah. <laughs> it's like posts lists. Can yeah. Posts lists. I'm a, that's from the 11 stream. Be sure to go check that out. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, let's go at references. <laughs> uh, parentheses. And uh, here we are going to put in a bit of like a special Grok uh, syntax uh, mm -hmm. because now we are in inside of a filter. A filter is when we have these brackets, these star brackets, that's a filter. Um, so now we have to assess a field on the parent filter sort of and you then we use the hat uh sign and the, gr the grammatical this, name for that being a carrot c-a-r-a-t a carrot. carrot yeah today i learned uh, <laughs> and, and now we are kind of in the scope the above the parent scope mm -hmm. so if we had uh, put in dot body that would be the same data that we have in the body just above this, right? Mm -hmm. uh, but we know that we want the underscore ID because that's kind of the reference uh, data. So comments that have as a reference to this uh, post, basically. Mm -hmm. this, is, this is kind of the one way to do it. Um, there's a uh, caveat here because if the post had multiple fields that also could contain references, and one of those references uh, maybe was to this post mm -hmm. that will also be included, right? So, so this is kind of a shorthand that we know works because of the data structure that uh, we have now. But if you want to be re really sure that you are picking the right one, uh, you would probably go for the ID inside of the post dot ref uh, kind of path. Yeah. Did that make sense? Of avoid circular logic whenever possible and be specific as opposed to generic when you can't be sure that you're not going to have circular logic built in. Yeah, something like that, <laughs> right? Um, and uh, this will return all the comment document data, including the revision and the timestamps and all of that. And maybe that's fine, or maybe we'll just restrict it to the sort of basic set of uh, fields that we want. So name, text, uh, we don't need the post because we kind of already know that from context. We're there, yeah. uh, but we maybe want the created at pub, uh, date field. Uh, so that's an underscore because that's kind of built in. Yeah. 
So how would you be specific on the field to check that contains the reference? Should we just go ahead and do it? Sure. Actually, yeah, yeah. So if you remember from how we set up the the post schema type, we we made a field called post. So then we can replace this references thing um, with post. And if you remember the data structure in the object, it's underscore ref on this object. And that should be the same as the ID of the parent. So caret dot underscore ID. So this would be the safest way to make sure that you are actually getting just the comments that, that you want. Nice. It's maybe kind of more logical in a way, but, uh, but yeah. Yeah. So it's, it's the long hand, which is probably the safe hand anyway. All right. So now we theoretically have comments as an array on, uh, as an object that has an array inside of it. Uh, so comments will be an array, an array. Okay. of comments. Yeah. Uh, so that should be it. And now we can go back to the slug. Yep. Uh, if we had a lot of time, we could make a separate component, I guess, for comments. But we can also just try to log out the data. Let's let's just log out the data because we are uh, seriously pressed for time at this point. Yeah. So uh, use some brackets, I guess. This is React. So. Yep. Uh, and inside of let's do the good old JSON stringify thing. Um, so uh, yeah stringify and then post dot comments post dot comments and we are not doing optional chaining here because we are we are sure that we have the comments we are 100 <laughs> uh, uh let's see if you refresh maybe Yeah, there it is. There you got it. Newest, newer name, newest text, names a teapot, all those things that we did kind of ridiculously. They are hanging out on the page. I was expecting for whatever reason they were just going to be console log because I wasn't thinking about what we actually typed in. But um, yeah, so now you would just theoretically create a component that has a list of all of these and they would display on the page. Yeah, and you could also go ahead and, and add to the grok filter like an order if you mm -hmm. want sort of ascending or descending order depending on when when it was made yeah. and so on but uh, i think we now have all the bricks and pieces to actually sort of now we are full circle right yeah. uh, and again there's a bunch of complexity we haven't touched on so uh, maybe you want to actually see the comment that you just posted uh observant uh watchers would, would see that it got static props so that means that it goes and fetch the data every time the site is building yep. um, and not on the load of the page. So maybe you need to put that new comment inside of the state and just render that uh, or do a different way of handling data, like a fetch uh, after render or something, something. Yeah, and so at that point, you should kind of figure out what your, uh, what your optimal like static versus dynamic level is. And what's cool with Next is you can actually mix. So you can choose to have some pages be static and some more dynamic. And uh, if you are hosting this on Rochelle, uh, it will also do sort of clever stuff with caching and so on mm -hmm. to, to, to make sure that you can get both speed but also new data. So there's a lot of things we could do here, uh, obviously, but, uh, yeah. but yeah. This is kind of the what you need to get started, at least. Definitely, and, and yeah, you could even since we had those API routes, you could go in and you could create basically a serverless function that could check for newest updates and pull against that every X amount of time. Lots of different things we could do in there. And if you are actually planning to actually do this, like for reals, mm -hmm. uh, I would also think about how to prevent this endpoint from being abused, right? Sure. Uh, so maybe you actually want the CAPTCHA thing on the forum. Maybe you want to look into how you can prevent anyone to just post data to this endpoint that, that it only can come from 
from the front end that you define and so on. That would be yeah. in interesting streams to to look at later, maybe. But uh, yeah. I don't feel there's enough there's not enough talk about how to secure these serverless endpoints that we are making. Mm -hmm. Uh, I, I see that question actually pretty regularly. It's, it's like, yeah. I made this thing, there's not any documentation around how I can make sure it's not abused. And like, it's like, oh, well, you could maybe put a key in there. You could like put all these, like basically make your own like cheap version of a token and like make sure that that's always there. But it feels a little under documented across the entire like Jamstack world. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, yeah, so we made, that's that's a good idea for a, a future stream, I think. Taking and notes, yeah. uh, uh, I guess virtual they have rate limits and so on, but it's nice to not have sort of one thousand comments <laughs> waiting for you. Um, yeah. A last one, last thing before yeah. we sign off. Uh, now we now we kind of like just create documents that. They are available on the public API once you have created the, the comment, which makes sense maybe. But if you kind of want some moderation, if you don't want the comment to go live, you can define your own ID in the comment object and prepend that with drafts so that you are saving the comment as a draft with insanity. And thereby, it's not public before you are actually publishing it yourself. Well, and then you could even go in and you could have it where uh, you can manually select to, to trust it and, and put it live. And then we'd have a web hook that would rebuild on Vercel. And then, and then, and then, and then, like we, we could optimize this in so many different awesome ways. This is cool. fun. Yeah, this was a good stream. I uh, thanks everyone for tuning in. Uh, if you have any questions about what we did, unfortunately, we don't have time to take them right now, but we do have an amazing Slack community that if you're not already a part of, you can head over to slack.sanity.io and sign up. And Knut's in there. I'm in there. Uh, Kapehe, who's also hanging out in chat today, is in there. Uh, there's a help channel. There's all sorts of great stuff in there if you are looking for uh, any sort of conversations around what we talked about today. Um, yeah, any, any closing words from you, Knut, before I sprint and find something to eat for lunch before our meeting that happens in a minute? <laughs> no, go, go fetch your lunch. And, awesome. Uh, yeah, we'll see you all, all right. later. Thanks for watching. Thanks, everyone.